this is Ms. Schaefer again. I wanted to talk to you today about two elements. Uh, one is shape and one is form. They look very similar to each other, but one is 2D, very flat, and one is 3D where it pops out. And I'm gonna show you the difference. So you think of like, you know what a 3D movie is, it pops out at you. But what does the word dimension mean? Um, what does 2D mean? So it's kind of like a measurement. So if you were to get a 2D object, which is pretty much like a piece of paper, you have height and width. Um, and that is just two measurements. There's nothing else that you can measure here to make this. So there's no depth in the back. Now you're like, but what if it's laying down? Well, then there's no height, right? There's still two measurements. There's width and now depth, which goes back away from the viewer. So either way, whether it's this way or this way, it changes the measurement name, but it's still only two measurements. Does that make sense? So height, width, or width and depth. Now, uh, let me show you what 3D is and maybe that'll help you understand a little more. So 3D is kind of like a cube. So we have this cube and it's, we have a, a, sorry, we'll do it this way, a height, um, and it's a height this way too, this way and this way. So you don't count the sides. It's still one height all the way around. And then this is how wide it is, so a width. And you can change it and move it. It's still gonna be the same, it's height and width. But then it also has, from the viewer, it has depth. So it goes from close to far away. So here's the depth for now, okay? So that's why it is three. Um, so what we are gonna do, this is like a form and the sheet of paper is like a shape. So we have a square and now we have a cube, right? This is a cube, like almost like an ice cube. So what we're gonna do is we are going to draw our shapes into our form. And it's kind of like making a circle into a sphere, which is a ball, right? So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty fun. So let's go. So what are shapes? We have circles. What else can you think of? Square. Maybe a rectangle. And um, triangle. So these are our shapes and we are gonna transform them into forms. So we make a circle. And this time when we shade, we are actually popping out the form. So think of like a moon, a crescent moon. You are curving around your shape. So since the shape is a circle, you're not gonna make straight lines. You're gonna make it smile. So the darkest area is gonna be at the bottom because your light's gonna come from um, a source at the top, whether it's the sun or a, a light in the room. So it kind of looks like a smile. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna not press as hard on your pencil and go lighter. So the next round circle area is going to be just a little bit lighter. You're not pressing as hard and you keep going up until it's completely white. So you're making um, every shade level lighter and lighter as it goes to the center. It's kind of like a target in a sense where it goes dark at the edge, then medium, then light, then white, just like we talked about in value. Now, you can make a darker edge around it, and it kind of bounces off a little bit of light if you want to play with that. Underneath it, you do need to make a flat circle, which is an oval, and you darken it really dark right underneath the ball or the sphere, right? It's already popped out. So you do that really dark and get lighter as you go out around the edge, and that will make it really pop out. So sometimes you have to have the right pencil, maybe a little bit darker pencil, but you get in there and you darken really deep underneath that circle. 
but that's an oval area that you're doing a shadow on the ground on the table. So just to remind you, when you're shading, you're kind of making moons, and then it goes into a little circle. So it goes dark, medium, light, and lightest. But that's just to show you how I was curving. And then, of course, the oval shadow at the bottom. So that's just a reminder that I don't want lines in between. You're not really supposed to see lines in between the colors. Now you've got your square. And it's like airplanes taken off the same way. You can't go straight across diagonal. You're going to fly them up in the air um, diagonal up, not straight across. So all three are going the same way. So they're going um, to the same direction. Now, if you're going to draw your lines down, they've got to be parallel like the number 11. And straight across has to be flat as you can get it. Because it's almost like as if a marble was sitting on the top, it wouldn't fall off the edge. So make sure your, your top, see there's the marble. You don't want it to fall left or go right. So that's why you want to make it as straight as possible and straight down as possible. So now you're going to make a shadow behind your box, your cube. So you just continue that line diagonally. And now you go straight across, just like the edge of your paper, go straight flat across. And you're going to darken in that triangle area. So if you want to shade on the sides and you're doing lines, you have to go diagonal the same way the lines are. Don't go straight across. You have to go diagonal up and shade up. Now on the front, you can go straight across because the bottom of that is really flat and straight across. And you do that just a little bit lighter. Leave the top the widest because it's like the sun or the light source is coming down on the cube. Darken your shadow in the back just a little bit more than the box so it's behind it. Now we're going to go to a rectangle. It's kind of the same principle as a cube, but we're going to do it anyway. Because you never know, it could be like the eraser in your classroom. You want to make the same diagonal lines straight across and straight down on the sides. And you're going to shade the same way. Go diagonal up when you shade the side. But in the front, you can go just straight across. Remember to make the shadow in the back by extending it and then going straight across to make that little indention. So then you shade light in the front. And there's your brick, I guess. Now for the triangle, you want to make your triangle again. This time you're going to measure how tall the, the uh, triangle is and you're going to go to the midpoint. So if you were to draw the triangle, you're going to make a dot at that midpoint. And now you're going to connect it to the bottom and the top. And this is going to be a pyramid. So what you want to do is you want to make the lines going up parallel. So it has to look like the number 11 again. It can't touch. So that line is going to look like an 11. And then you put another line and another line, and it's very even all the way down. They never cross each other. Now, if it's straight across, you're going to keep going straight across all the way up. So they would never touch either. If you need to make a shadow on a pyramid, figure out where your light source is. Where's your sun or your light? And you're going to do it the opposite. So you're shading the opposite side. Now you want to make a shadow on the ground of the pyramid. You make it like a little triangle and make it really dark. So it's kind of like your sun was on the other side. So then you just sharpen your edges, make it pop out. Mm -hmm. 